Hello, hi, what's up everyone? Welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. I know you're excited about today's video, but before we jump into that, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Wondershare and I'm so excited to share with you all PDF Element 7. So PDF Element 7 is this really great software that allows you to edit and sign PDFs. I find it a lot easier to use than most other PDF software and the interface is very simple to navigate. The best part is that it is so easy to add and edit links. Yeah, you heard me correctly. I've been looking for software that allows me to edit and add links after the PDF is created, so this is an absolute game changer for achieving digital planner peace and also signing documents. I'll be sure to have the links in the description below for you to check out Wondershare and PDF Element 7 if you're interested. So without further ado, let's go ahead and make some planner rings. So the tools I'll be using today are my iPad Pro 11 inch and the second gen Apple Pencil as well as the app Procreate which you can find for around $9.99 in the App Store. I'm going to start by choosing my canvas size by using the plus button up here and I usually click the square 300 dpi option. This is the canvas size that I created which you can do by clicking this button right here and inputting in your ratio. So for a square you want to do 1280 1280 and I have it set to 300 dpi automatically. So you can change your canvas size with pixels, inches, centimeters, and you can also go ahead and rename your canvas if you wish. However, I'm just going to go with the canvas size that I have already created. So now that I have my canvas size ready, I'm gonna go in and choose my color palette. And the palettes and brush sets that I will be using today are actually available in my shop that I created. So I have a bunch of metallic options. I have metallic gray, a metallic bronze, two different metallic rose gold options, as well as a metallic gold. And you can use any of these color palettes to create the ring look that you want. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the metallic gray option. I'm going to create gray or silver rings today. I'm gonna to make sure I have a color selected. And now I'm gonna go into my brush ring set. So I have five different options as far as rings and you can use this tutorial on any of the rings. Here I'm just showing you what the rings look like in the brush set. So there's quite a lot of variety for you to find your ideal ring for this tutorial. So for this tutorial I'm actually going to just choose kind of this thick closed planner ring. I really like the way it looks and I think it's really easy to work with. So I'm just going to center it here on my canvas. And then I'm going to go back into my brush library and the calligraphy option and select mono line. This brush comes with Procreate. It allows you to put basically any pressure that you want on the brush and it'll stay consistent. So now I'm going to go back to my metallic gray color palette and set it as default so it's really easy to access in the colors menu. So I'm going to go ahead and select the white color option. I'm going to make it as white as I can and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to deselect the background color because I want to work with a transparent background here. And I'm just testing my brush stroke here, make sure I get a thickness that I like, and I'm going to trace the circular part of the ring. If you hold the shape down, you can auto perfect the shape. And here I am just going to drop the color in and move this layer underneath my ring layer. I'm also going to select my ring layer and turn down the opacity. And then I'm going to select the eraser tool. I'm going to make sure I'm on a new layer. I'm going to have my brush mono line selected and I'm going to create kind of like guidelines for myself. And this will make a little bit more sense later while I'm creating these guidelines. But I'm just gonna make sure I have straight lines coming off the ring. I'm going to go back into my eraser tool here. I'm going to make sure that I'm on that ring layer and not the guideline layer. And I'm just going to erase the excess circular part of the ring portion on the ring layer. So I basically want a straight edge to my ring. There's a lot of ways that you can approach this part of the tutorial. However, I really like to start with this part and I find it the easiest. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to deselect my guideline layer, make sure I'm still on my ring layer, and then kind of clean up the edges here a bit. 
And you can kind of see where this is going. You see kind of a ring going into like a circular shape. That's gonna be the whole of our paper. I'm just tidying up the edges here. So now that I have a look that I like, I'm going to turn the opacity back up, kind of tidy up a few more edges here, make sure I can get it to the way I like. And that's basically it. I'm going to delete the guideline layer because I no longer need that. I'm gonna go into the arrow tool and kind of position the ring wherever I want within my circle. Again, this will end up being our whole of the paper. I kind of like to get this part of the tutorial out of the way first. So now that I'm done with that, I'm actually going to hide the circular layer and just work with my ring. So I'm gonna select my ring layer and I'm gonna click this alpha log option. And this is gonna be key throughout the tutorial this alpha lock button here. So with that tool selected, I am going to make sure I'm on my ring layer. I'm gonna make sure I have a light color from my palette selected. So in this case, I'm going to choose one of the lighter grays or this like white color in the center. Choose one that I like. And then I'm gonna go into the airbrushing set within Procreate. I'm gonna have this soft airbrush tool selected. And then I'm just going to gently stroke across the ring to mimic a glare, a light glare on this ring. And you wanna do this on the top portion of the ring because that is where the light will hit our rings if they were to be realistic. So I'm just gently stroking the ring to get kind of a glare that I want to achieve here. Once I have a look that I'm okay with, I can go in and I'm going to select a darker color for my shadows. I'm gonna make sure I still have the soft airbrush tool selected for this. And then I'm gonna go in to the bottom portion of the ring as well as the corner. To achieve a faux metallic look, you wanna make sure that you have your lights on top and your shadows on the bottom you are really gonna see a lot of shadow in the corner of your rings, so I like to concentrate there. To take it a step further, you can also add a subtle shadow to the bottom of the top edge of your ring. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going out into the corner and I'm adding a slight shadow to the very top edge of my ring as well to try and give it a even more realistic look. And that's basically the basis of our realistic metal ring. You can also go into the smudging tool here and you're also gonna wanna make sure that you have the airbrush, the soft airbrush tool selected within Procreate. And you can actually go in and smudge a few of these colors together, kind of give, give it a more gradient metallic look. And this, uh, this part of the tutorial, you'll really play around with to try and, to try and get a glare or a shadow that you really like. And that's basically our ring. So now we're gonna go in and kind of refine it a bit. I'm gonna go in and make this circle layer visible and hide my ring layer so I can just work with this circle. And again, this circle will be part of our hole. I'm gonna duplicate that layer, deselect the top layer and make sure I see the bottom layer. I'm gonna drag and drop a black color and this is going to represent the shadow behind the hole. So I'm gonna go over to my magic wand. I'm gonna make sure I have Gaussian blur selected and I'm just going to gently glide my pencil across the screen and you'll see a slight shadow appear behind the white circle. I'm also gonna go into that layer and turn down the opacity a bit to try and give it a little bit more realism. Once I have a look that I like, I'm going to merge the two down. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. I'm gonna make sure that my ring layer is selected so I can see the full effect of this page hole and I am going to lightly tap to the right of my white circle to create a stacked page look. By lightly tapping on any side of something you have selected in Procreate, it will only move that object by pixel. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm zooming in so you can see kind of the effect that this is creating. It's giving it a look like the pages are stacked, which just adds to more realism to your rings. So I'm just gonna repeat that process over and over again until I have as many or as little pages as I want. Obviously here, this is free range. I generally like the look of having more stacked papers. I find that it's a little bit more realistic. So I'm going in and I'm adding multiple layers of this circle and gently tapping to create a look of stacked pages. Once I have something that I like, I'm gonna make sure that I have the topmost layer selected and drop the color black in to 
create the full effect of my hole. And that's essentially it. You could leave it at this if you wanted. However, I'm gonna go in and kind of center my ring a bit. I'm also gonna add a few more details later in this video that you don't necessarily have to do if you are pleased with this look. So now that I have a ring that I like, I'm gonna go in and I'm actually going to create a whole new layer. I'm gonna go back into my original gray color that I created the base ring with, and I'm actually going to make sure that I have my mono line tool selected. And I'm going to kind of draw like a triangular out from the edge of this ring. And this is going to serve as kind of like the curve of the ring. It's gonna give the appearance that the ring is also coming back out of the page and into the next ring formation, if that makes any sense. So I'm going in and I'm making sure that I erase any details that I accident accidentally drew over the stack paper, over the ring itself, just going in and refining those details just a little bit. All right, so once I have a look that I like, I'm gonna go back into my brush tool and I'm going to revisit our lovely friend again, the soft airbrush tool, and I'm gonna have the dark color selected for my shadows. I'm gonna turn alpha lock on for this layer as well, so I'm only coloring and making edits to that layer. And then I'm just going to kind of gently stroke to create kind of like a crease for this layer. This will give the appearance that it is turning back out of the page for the next ring. You can also go in, you can add some glare. So here I am, I'm just refining a few more details of my ring itself to create a metallic look that I like and want for this ring. So after a few more minor detail changes, you are essentially done with your planner ring. So I really like this look. It's super easy, super fast. You can go in and swipe all of your layers and group them. And this will allow you to move the whole grouping as one unit. So if I go up to my arrow tool and I move it around the canvas, all of the layers will move. So you can export the ring as just a singular ring as a PNG, save it to your camera roll. And then you can open it up into Keynote or wherever you have your digital planner stored. And sorry for my really disgusting, messy fingerprint written screen. I don't use any screen protectors. It's a question I get pretty often. So I'm just going to go into a notebook project that I haven't finished yet. So here's a sneak peek of something that I'm working on that I haven't yet finished. So I'm going to go in to the plus button, add my planner ring. And this is where you can refine your ring further. You can go in and crop it down. You can also adjust the proportions or ratios of the ring itself, resize the ring, and place wherever you want within your planner file. You can then copy and paste the ring over and over again to create a line of rings for your planner or notebook. Alternatively, you can create an entire line of rings within Procreate itself, go into your grouping and resize. And then you can go in and duplicate the entire grouping, use your arrow tool, and just create an entire set of rings that you can later export and then import into your digital planning file. So I like using this option as well if I want to import all my rings at once. So once you have the number of rings that you want, you can export the same way as a PNG and save it to your camera roll and then later import into Keynote or whatever digital planning service you use. You can go in and import the rings as an entire unit position and edit as you will. And there you have realistic metal planner rings to use in your creations. So you don't have to use my color palette or brush set. You can also manually draw the rings if you wanted, which is actually a lot easier than it sounds. However, I really enjoy using my planner ring brush set. It makes it so much easier and a lot faster, but I will show you how to draw the planner ring itself if you don't have this set. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect all of my planner ring layers, make sure I have a new layer selected. 
And to achieve that same drawn look, I'm actually gonna go in and turn on my drawing guide just so I can get a little bit more precise since I won't have the ease of the planner stamp. So you can go in actually and edit your drawing get grid to something that you like. You can go in and change the color. I generally like to use a darker color so I can see the grid lines a lot better. You can change the thickness of the lines, the opacity of the lines, as well as the size of the grid itself. So I'm going in, finding a grid size that I like. I'm gonna make sure that I have the mono line brush selected so I can have a consistent look throughout while I'm drawing. I'm gonna mimic a page here by drawing a straight line. I'm gonna create a new layer, and this is where I'm gonna create my actual ring. And you'll basically just create like an arc shape. Hold it down so it'll autocorrect, and then you can go in and make edits manually. Get a look that you like, and you'll basically repeat this process for the top portion of the ring. So I'm doing that here, and then I'm gonna go in and edit it. You wanna make sure that it's pretty even throughout, so uh, you can go in and edit that. And then you want a straight edge, so you'll go in and erase to make sure that there's a straight edge for both sides of the ring. Then you wanna go back in to your brush tool. I just deselected the page here, so I can work with my ring, and you want to close those lines. So once that's done, you basically have your ring. So you can drop in your color and you can just repeat the whole tutorial the same way, like exactly the same way. You can go back into your soft airbrush tool. You wanna make sure you have a light color selected. You wanna make sure that you have alpha lock on and then you'll just repeat the entire process, get a shading that you like and yeah, that's basically it. So this is how you can make realistic metal rings fast and easy. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. It really does mean the world to me that you are continuing to support me and my channel further. I know this video was really well requested, so I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be sure to answer them down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one.